What's up, hybrids? Welcome back to another episode of the Phantom Hybrid Podcast. This is Hanako, and I am here with Anthony, Mike, and Lori after a long extended absence. I'm back! You're- Huzzah! It's about time. But 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 we kind of knew you was gonna come back for Shadow and Bone, and oh, that's what y'all. we're discussing. Season two, episode one. Finally, Shadow and Bone has come back to Netflix. Let me tell y'all, ever since they started releasing the promo images and the trailer, I have been sitting there giddy like a child. Like, I can't wait. I can't wait because there are certain characters and certain things that I know were, were going to happen in this season that I was like, I'm so excited for it. But then also because I wanted to see what they were going to do with the crows. Because again, because again, I, I have not read the Six of Crows uh, duology yet. Don't shoot me. Um, but yeah, I was so excited. And now it's finally here. It's back. Yeah, we get to talk uh, all, all I'm going to say is y'all have been insufferable waiting for this stupid yes, show. Yes, we have. We yes, have. Yes, we have. Yeah, I don't understand how anyone could be so excited for this show. Like, you really? don't? Are you kidding me? Whatever. Have you watched it? Yeah, actually, I have. Yes. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. You're You'll tripping. be all right. You'll be all but right. I have, I, have, I have a thing or two to say that y'all might be surprised. Okay, go ahead. Look, okay. let's start. No, let's, we don't have just, to start. No. No, because because we're just we're just gonna talk okay. about some stuff okay. because uh, I'll just say I'm I'm gonna back off on the Jesper thing mm-hmm. because this season he's actually not that bad. I I I kind of like this level of snark. It's an appropriate level. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Did I, and then the I, fact that I, he's a, that the fact that they confirmed what we thought about him and that he yes. is a fucking durast. Yes, yes. And I just think he's an artificer. Within huh? the first seven minutes, man. <laughs> well, that made I think me happy. Was, I was like, finally. Well, it is one of those scenes where it's really kind of obvious that he's doing something mm-hmm. hanky panky with the bullets. <laughs> Yeah, like he, he, he doesn't miss. Literally. So it's like, yes, he does something. He's he's mechanically inclined. Mm-hmm. And some, hit, and some was level. it Ivan? Was it Ivan? He yeah. hit him in the same spot mm-hmm. every time he pulled the trigger, no matter where he was. And Ivan was so. like, "You're a." He knocked him out before he could <laughs> right. say it. So yeah, but yes, they finally confirm it. He is a duress, and um, you know. I think we'll learn a little bit more of his his backstory uh, in in later episodes, but um, yeah, just the fact that they didn't leave us uh, or or make us have to go through like several episodes before we find that out. Okay, we find this out right at the beginning. Okay, now we can proceed. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I inject one little thing about him? Yes, I love the fact that for once, once in our lifetime. Our people are the cool ones with the magic. Okay, it was Africa, the Sparia, the Sparia, black love. Black. It was like, yes, you want to be down with the magic? You come with our people. I Hell was yeah, like, it was fa- yes, fantasy Wakanda. That's Thank what it you. is. It was Thank fantasy you. Wakanda, it where everybody so had cool. powers and they were cool with it. I it love so seeing cool. the Zemini, and not not only were cool with it, but they were like a safe haven for other Grisha. Love and them. and other people because there were other people there who were um you know escaping from the, uh, yeah the yeah. the after effects of what happened with the fold and they were so welcoming and yeah they were so so cool and I love the way that um the librarian when when Elena kind of mentions to her she was like oh you're a Grecian she was like or you're a duress she was like. We don't use those narrow terms. Like we don't, we don't limit ourselves in the way that you guys limit yourselves. And you know that she's the way that she said, you know, um, but we are safe in Novi Zem, and you know we are hoping that the God, you know, the saints will watch over all the Rafkin, Grisha, or whatever. And then she put her hand on Alina's shoulder, like I know what you are, and but just kept on going. And then they, uh, you know, when. Um, Alina and Mao were running for their lives. They they protected them. I was like, okay, yeah, I like this. I love yeah, it. Yeah, because it wasn't the Zim, it wasn't a Zimini person who called them out. It was one of the other refugees. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But oh uh, yeah. And of course he run, he runs in here, yeah, he he happens to run into his general of all people, just like happened to run turn around and run right into him. Like, wait, what? 
I was like, why are y'all in no museum? Like, jeez. But anyway, um, so that's yeah. one of those things that you just got to be like, the writers, come on, y'all got to do better. <laughs> y'all have got. Well, to do I mean, you got to think about it. Together. They're all kind of scattered. They're all probably trying. You know, there's a whole bunch of things. First of all, Mal is, you know, he's a deserter. They're looking for the Sum Summoner, so they've probably sent people all over looking for uh, Elena. It just so it happens, happens that to that, be his commanding officer. I mean, mm-hmm. hey, that dude he's knew wherever, wherever Elena is, I Mal know. is going to be. So he's like, yeah, let me go look for her because he's, I mean, he, Mal made it no secret last season. Wherever Elena is, I am going to find myself there. Right, but yep. but it's just the fact that his commanding officer happened to be in Novia Zim of all places. Well, this commanding officer with a photographic yeah. memory who never forgets anybody. He's like, oh, I never forget a face boy. Yeah, but yeah, Mal on, did Mal didn't make himself forgettable with with no, that he, commanding officer. No, he I never mean, does because he always. He always gets shot, gets hurt, or gets lost. It's like, damn, of course I know who you are. You the motherfucking cause me all this trouble. Now I'm gonna cause you all this trouble. It's when it comes to, to Alina. Oh, you need yeah. to send somebody yeah. after her. Oh, we need to protect her. Oh, I'm going after, like, basically, he was like, fuck you and your rules. I'm going to find my girl. <laughs> so, yeah, I would assume that general, the, he, he, he remembers Mal. He didn't make it, yeah. he didn't make it very hard uh, to, to be forgotten. But anyway, let's let's start talking about this episode. So at the beginning, you know, we have uh, Alina and it looks like she's in. I'm not sure what town she's supposed to be in, but of course, she's you know, the fold is there and it's growing and she sees um, Kerrigan. And we find out that she's having dreams about the fold and about Kerrigan. And as she and Mal are. Um, they're arriving at, I think it was called w- Weddle Island. I think that's the name of it. But um, when they get off and they're trying to go through, I guess, their version of customs, they, they're they in line with some Ravkin refugees. And when she goes to ask about them, they're like, uh, one of the ladies is like, you know, um, the fold keeps growing. It, it over, you know, it grew overnight and swallowed half of our town and it keeps growing. So she's figuring out that this is actually happening with the fold, that the fold is growing and she's having some kind of dreams about it. Now, with her and Mal, apparently it's it's been about two weeks since they left Ketterdam. So I'm guessing when they left Rafka or Nova Kabir, so wherever it was that they had um, landed, I forgot. They went to Ketterdam first and then they came up to um, Weddell, wherever this place is. And, um, you know, they, they seem to have gotten back on familiar ground with each other, but there's still this like thing in between them that they obviously have not done anything about yet. And they don't until they get to this town and they're put in this hotel. I guess it's a hotel room and room together. And it's like they finally kiss. Finally. Took them long oh, enough. Have mercy. He was he was all like, y'all sleep on the floor. She's like, no, there's plenty of room in the bed. Come on over. I'm like, oh, God. Can y'all just get, get it over with? Just, we all know it's going to happen. Just I'm, get I'm, the I'm, hell I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. So I've already seen the whole season. The couples in this show... I love them, but y'all got on my nerves to see like there's there's so much like slow burn and is he or is she or will they or won't they? I was like, can y'all just get it together? I I, I need these things to happen. And and some of them we saw happen. Some of them is kind of like, eh, we don't know. But I was just like, I need y'all to get it together. I just I can't, I can't, I can't. My OCD was bothering me because they both got on the bed with their shoes on. No, Mal with his dirty ass boots on. I was That's like, what I'm talking about. Well, Elena had her shoes on too, I think. They both did. I didn't, but I, I, didn't, I, I didn't notice because no. Mal had the big ass army boots on the bed. He was like, what are you going information, <laughs> motherfucker? Take your damn boots off. It bothered me so much that I couldn't I well I'm watching the scene but at the same time I'm going, you got your dirty shoes on that nice bed. 
Sorry. You can you tell see all the like... laces on those shoes. I mean, Man. he about to go right back out. You know, even take all the time to take him take him off. <laughs> I feel of you. I feel put you. Back on. Come on. They but he could have put belt. his feet like over to the side so that the you know they, they you. weren't on the bed. You know, he did on the bed. Just pull it over a little bit. But anyway, we're gonna come back to Alina and Mal because we got to go to where like. So I love the crows in the last season. I'm telling y'all this season, I am like, so I'm like so hard team crow. Just absolutely. Cass Brecker in this season. Uh, That's how it was. Like we get to see so much more of, of who he is, but when they arrive back in Ketterdam, you know, they're going to the Crow Club and the Crow Club has apparently been bought out. And as you know, as you um, remember from the last season, he offered up the deed of the Crow Club to Tantaline in order for Inej to be able to accompany him on this mission to find Alina. So now the Crow Club is no longer the Crow Club, but it's called the Kalish Prince. And somehow... Pekka Rollins has not only gotten ownership of the Crow Club, but it appears that he has gotten ownership of most of the businesses in the barrel. And just the look on Kaz's Kaz's face when he realizes that Pekka Rollins, of all people, owns his club, it triggers something in him. And we start seeing flashbacks from his life we see flashbacks of him as a little boy he's with someone that is obviously his brother and then we see kind of like these um images of him floating on a pallet or or some kind of thing of dead bodies and i was like oh so we're about to get the whole trauma story this season because you can it like from the moment you start seeing the flashbacks just slowly in this episode, you see Kaz, like Kaz still has his sharpness. Like when he revealed that he knew Jesper was a du- duress. But I feel like you start to see him unraveling a little bit. And it's strange because he's he's so, he's really so put put together. And to see him just kind of lose it like he does when, when they get arrested, they get arrested for murder. They don't get told whose murder it is. But I mean, I'm kind of like Jesper. Jesper is like, we just got back in town. Like, we haven't had time to murder anybody. We literally just stepped off the boat. Yeah. So I think I think um, it's interesting because I think the menagerie and the the bar and, and what was it? The Crow mm-hmm. Club? Crow, Crow Club. Club. They're mm-hmm. the only two places mm-hmm. that he didn't really own. So he must. Oh, it was a menagerie, and the menagerie, there was one other. Um, the menagerie crow club in one other place that he, yep. he had to take. Yeah, that. and so he must have killed the lady who owned the menagerie. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you and that that gave him the deed to the crow club. Because right. I mean, yeah, that's, 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 that's what, what he did. Happened. Yeah, because that's what he did to. Um, what was the other brothel that they got the um, the heart render from? I can't remember the name of that brothel, but remember yeah, he remember killed that owner, he killed the owner too, mm-hmm, yeah. in order to get it. So yeah, it has to. And then of course, when you start seeing the flashbacks from Kaz's uh, past, I was like, oh, Pekka Rollins must have had something to do with this because we never knew like why he had such a hatred for Pekka Rollins. But I think it's interesting watching this, you know, when they get, um, when they get put in, in the, I don't even know what to call it. I'm going to call it a paddy wagon because that's what it looks like. It's one of those little wagon type trucks that they used to take people to jail. And he's in there with other people. And one of the other prisoners keeps bumping into Kaz and like touching him. And you see every time he does, it triggers these memories. And then I started thinking, I said, you know, I paid attention to the fact that Cass wore gloves. Apparently he doesn't, there were certain things he didn't like touch, but you know, I never really paid attention to the fact that Cass has never initiated 
like any kind of contact with anybody. Anytime that we've seen, like when Pekka Rollins found him in last season, you know, his guy touched Kaz and you, you kind of look at the way Kaz is reacting and you think it's just because he's like, oh, this person is touching me. They need to get off me. But no, it really is like a, this person is touching me. He has like, it's a trigger for him. So I don't know ex exactly what, what the thing is, but you can see here, like, even when the guy is like, just, just kind of nudging him because of the, the motion of the truck, he starts hyperventilating. And I was just like, oh, this is a ma this is gonna be a major thing. Because the uh, again, this is the first time that we've seen Kaz not have it all together. And it's almost like we see him losing a little bit of control. And then you see him do the ha have the panic attack or or whatever. And it's just kind of like it's just it's just continuing and the more you see him the more disheveled he looks as well and I was just like oh okay so we're about to we're about to go on this uh trauma journey with Kaz and see what the hell happened to him and how that made him into the person he is but when he was sitting there like panicking and and hyperventilating and even Jesper was looking at him like Yo, we gotta get him off here. Get oh, you know, open the door, open the door. And then the 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 truck actually stops. And the person, um, the captain in in charge of the stat watch, he's like, Yeah, somebody paid a lot of money to have some time with y'all. And it's fucking Dreesen. Or so we think. So Dreesen comes in the room and he's like, Where's the sun summoner? You guys had an advance on my money, and you come back without her. And Jesper, I'm like, Jesper, baby, I need you to hush because you don't know no, how to. You, you knew know. you knew good and damn well he wasn't he wasn't gonna be able to keep his mouth shut because he's the one that just he likes to hear himself talk, so he's gonna talk. To say it was that much, it was just y'all wonder why I don't like his ass. You know what? Yeah, that's why I like him. You know what? <laughs> I happen to love Whatever. that about him. Whatever. Ain't nothing wrong with Jesper. Jesper is cool. But um, you know, Kaz again is is doing his thing. Of course, he's like he's he's recovering from his his panic attack, and he's starting to like pay attention to Drees, and then he's looking at the bodyguards. And there's one bodyguard that that stands out in particular. And Kaz calls Drees and out on it. He was like, "It's not your money. Like, yeah, you 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 were brought in as an intermediary, but this wasn't your job. It was his." And he points to you know, the younger looking, clean, clean shaven, like the one who kind of sort of looks out of place. You know who he looks like? He looks like Scott from Pentatonix. I, I thought he was going to start singing in harmony. He does. He does. I was like, I was like is he going to start harmonizing with them? He's like, you right. Oh. But that's but, what Okay, so so real uh -huh. quick, the, the Crows... Are starting to remind me of my favorite show, Leverage, with this whole with everything that's going on. It's like, cause like you see how they're figuring stuff out. Then you then you have like flash kind of like flashbacks of like how they go through their plans. And I was thinking about back to last season and stuff that we're going to get to eventually in this season. Mm -hmm. It reminded me a lot of Leverage, and I was like, oh man, this is mm -hmm. just, it made me love them even more. Yeah, but this so scene cool. was just like, cause as soon as as soon as the guy, as soon as he pointed and pointed him out, the guy was like, "Okay, enough, enough, enough playing around. All right, fine, you got me." And the way he dismissed Dressen was fucking hilarious. <laughs> I was like, "That that that was very satisfying." That yeah, was, you didn't do your job well me. enough. The saving <laughs> grace for me for the crows is that it, I do like a good heist, and everything they do is all about a heist. So. Mm -hmm. They always heisted something. It's always a heist with them. Oh, and I have to. I'm sorry. How did? How in the world did this slip my mind? So when they got arrested, of course, Inez t disappears her ass out of there. They call. They right. like make it a point to call her a wraith this season. I'm like, it's very fitting because yeah, when I tell gone. you that heifer, that heifer disappears at the drop she, of a dime. Yeah. <laughs> Right. It's, just, it's just like, like it's just like that vine, like he's just like, Shoo. 
It like fades away. <laughs> just gone. Because they tried to love arrest them all. Like, she does that. Yeah, oh, right. And, and that was, Michelle was like, oh, he looks familiar. Who is the, the guy, the um, the pirate or the privateer? Privateer. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's um, a distinction. He was in the OA. If you ever watched the OA. Yeah. Oh, okay, I OA. didn't. Okay. Yeah. If you ever if you ever want to be really mind tripped, watch the OA season one. Okay. 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 But yeah, um, so he he his he's a privateer. I was about to call him a pirate. He's a privateer by the name of Sturmon, and he's looking for Alina. And you know, he has the necklace that Alina gave to Kaz to keep his mouth shut. He was like, yeah, you know, um, my sources tell me that she was wearing this when she got on the boat. And, um, you know, this this is an expensive thing or a hard thing to kind of pawn or hawk. So, yeah, this tells me that you either know where she is or that she paid you to keep quiet about what she's doing, you know. And he starts talking about the different bounties that that are out um, for her, like the Fjordans have a 20 million Kruger bounty did you see jesper's face jesper was like um like <laughs> i can't even i can't even think about claiming that because jesper is at this point i think he's also loyal to alina he's like yeah no we're not gonna tell on her Kaz, on the other hand has different ideas because when sternhan starts you know talking about that he was like yeah you know um she either paid y'all off or this that and the other just tell me where she is and i'll give you 20 seconds so you can get out of here and Cass kind of reluctantly tells him where she is. But like he told Jesper, he said he'd already deduced where she might have been. He saw us come off of such and such boat. He knew enough about, you know, the fact that we were on the boat with her and this, that, and the other. He had the necklace. Like he was going to figure it out. Well, I, I think figure he was if really he's just... going to give us, if he's going to give us money, we might as well recoup our money. He's already going to go there anyway. Might as well make a buck out of it. I mean, they kind of need it right now because, like Jesper says, with the Crow Club gone, they don't have a home anymore. He was just looking for confirmation. Like he knew mm-hmm. he just mm-hmm. before he committed all his resources to going there. Right. He just wanted to make sure. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all. That's that's really what he wanted. This confirmation. Yeah. But yeah, that's gonna be interesting. I, I won't even. That's gonna be interesting. I have to. I have to remember because I watched the whole season. I have to remember what falls in where, so I don't talk like ahead of the of the um of the episode. But anyway, going back to Alina and Mal. So their plan is Alina is gonna go to the library and see what kind of information she can find out about the Sea Whip because that's what. Her goal is now she still wants to bring down the fold again sh- at this point she still thinks that kerrigan is dead so she needs another amplifier to make her a little more powerful so that she can bring down the fold so she's in the library looking for information on the sea whip mal has gone to the docks to talk to the fishermen to see if they've heard any rumors or you know myths about the sea whip now while alina is in the library she finds some old nautical maps and one of the maps kind of has a hidden, um, I don't know what you want to call it. I'm not a cartographer. It's like a watermark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Kind of like a watermark where, um, you know, it, it looks like a sea animal, a sea whip, I guess you can say. So now she knows or has a general idea of where the sea whip is, but while she's in the library, she overhears some other people talking about how the Sun Summoner and Kirigan destroyed Nova Kribirsk and how they were in league together and this, that, and the other. And then she sees a, a newspaper where she and Kirigan are on it and it's, it's like a wanted poster where people are looking for them. And, you know, the way that they have them, they have them holding hands and he's got his hand out with some of his shadow stuff and she's got her hand out with like a ball of light. But the thing that trips me out about this poster is the look on her face. Like even in the drawing, she's like, I can't believe y'all got me standing here with him holding his hand. Like what the fuck? (laughs) But she, um, 
you know, she she leaves because what happens is she drops the newspaper. She tries to walk out with the newspaper. She bumps into someone. And of course, she tries to pick up the newspaper and the person sees and they're like, oh, it's the sun summoner. So now here she is. She's on the run. Mal is in the docks with the fishermen. And like you said, Anthony, he bumps into his old commander from First Army. And of course, they're like, he's like, oh, yeah, you're a deserter. You need to be arrested. And so we we have this chase through the market. Now, I will say this. Mal got some skills because that that motherfucker was parkouring like no, nobody's business. I'm just, just reflecting, like I said, on him just recognizing him out of nowhere just happened to be like like we were talking about having to be at the right place at the right time but yeah it's like i i was impressed i mean this was a this was kind of a funny chase like one one of the soldiers grabs a grabs pottery and throws it at him and he's like that's 25 da, 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 da. then mal comes back jumps and pays him cars like sorry about that and pays him i'm like what then, then here comes Alina running down the alley, and she sees Mal running for his life. She's like, "What, what the fuck?" fuck? <laughs> and then she chases him. She's like, "Wait, where y'all going?" Right. I was like, "Oh." Because they're they're literally about to arrest Mal, and then of course she she's like, they, "They're not about to take him from me." So she uses her sun summoning powers, her light, and she deflects. Yeah. And you know, she's like, "Well, ah, so Duncan." So much for, for me staying, you know, staying anonymous or whatever. But when they get trapped, the Zemini market people, they pull their carts and they block the first army. And they look at Eleni like, yeah, we got you. Y'all here, here's some stuff to disguise your clothes. Here, here's the door. Bye. And, and they just stand in the first army. They can't do anything. What you about to do against a horde of angry black people? Not a goddamn thing. Black black people with powers who can who can who can take your rifles apart with a twist of a wrist. Right. And and and, and then and then I know the sound effect wasn't there, but when they turned and they did that whole symbol, I heard in the background Wakanda forever. I mean, seriously. I know. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Right. It was it was literally the coolest scene of the movie, except for it was one awesome. other thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, here we go, black people saving other people again, not saving ourselves. Uh, but no, see, kidding. but see, in this, the context was good because they didn't need to save themselves. But they knew, oh, that's the same. I thought, I thought it was a great this. scene, though. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought then, it was cool as shit. Like, they, got, they came together, they were like, all right, y'all go, we got you. And then we get the introduction of the twins. <laughs> this, let me tell you, these two characters, these have been two of the characters I have looked forward to the most being introduced in this season because I absolutely fucking love them in the books and just the presence they have on screen with these two is like I'm I'm just I'm just so ready I'm like okay first of all love Lewis Tan did not care did not care much for Mortal Kombat but that wasn't his fault <laughs> so I'm like was okay. that Lewis Tan I thought he looked familiar <laughs> yes. Okay, he was paid. So, yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna. Okay, now I'm watching it. I thought I recognized. Okay, all right, I'm out again. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you know they they happen to come up on the scene where the, the commander is telling them, okay, we need to bring him. He has the sun summoner. They're both wanted. We need to bring them in. Blah blah blah. And Toga and Tamara looking like, huh? Looks like a disturbance. Or it looks like fun. And, and and they're kind of both going back about which one it's going to be. They're like, hmm, okay. And they walk off and I was like, yeah, this is where they're about to get involved. Yay. I'm so excited. Then, then the next scene, you have Inej stealing knives just from all over the damn place. I was like, I, I just... Like, I know they give her the nickname The Wraith, and I know she can disappear. I just need to know how people can't figure out where this, like, where did she get these skills from? Where did she, she was get trained these? like that. She, well, from her, where? Her, I mean, In the brothel? Yeah, I mean, well, no. Didn't, didn't they say that let's see, she was heavily, she's very religious. Was it, was it part of her religious training? 
I can't remember. I I wouldn't think so. Given the about be, it, 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 train it's, it's actually her stealthy people. assassin. No, it's her right. people. It's it's her people where she came from before she got um captured. Her people remember are Norman Normads, and they are basically, and I'm I'm gonna use the proper word, Romany, uh, sort of. And okay. it was uh basically they were trained gymnasts, uh, you know, because we saw last season, mm-hmm. and they have been rumored to when they because they they're normads that that's one of the things that certain members of their society are assassins or at least highly uh skilled bodyguards. So it's something that she knew before she was captured. Okay, because I was gonna say like. She has some skills, and y'all will see when you get further into this season. I was just like, she is a bad bitch. That's that's just all there is to it. Like, mm-hmm. she is bad. But the crazy thing is, even with her being who she is, Jasper and Kaz are walking down the street talking about, you know, they're, they're still hiding from the stat watch. And while they're walking, Kaz just says, Inej, what did you find? And she starts and speaking, and Jasper turns around. Look, he was like, oh, <laughs> Jasper has a heart attack. He was, like, she was like, Ugh. So I think it's very interesting that as quiet as Inej is, Kaz is always so aware of her enough that he can tell when she enters the room or when she enters his space. I was like, hmm, that's very telling. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But anyway, they leaked. So- right so anyway what she finds out is that they are accused of murdering Tantaline like you said Anthony and the look that Cass gives her and she's like or rather he's looking like he says so he framed us for her murder and Inez is like okay So he's upset with us for taking the job that he wanted, which, you know, a million Kruger job, I probably would be mad too. But she was like, why kill Tantaline? And that's when Kez is like, you know, oh, oh, no. Jesper was the one who was like, why kill Tantaline? Because Jesper didn't know. Only Inej knew that he gave her the deed. So that's when he tells them, he was like, yeah, she held the deed to the Tant Club, uh, to the Crow Club. And so Inez is like, he owns the club. Everyone who works there now works for Pekka Rollins. And then that's when she says there's more. He also owns, um, you know, she she shows her wrist and she's like, he owns the menagerie too. And she, she was like, uh, and everything else the menagerie owns, which means that technically speaking, he owns her. When she said that the look on Kaz's face when he turned around, he turned his face away from them, but he looked like he was about to murder someone. And I was like, oh, this is about to get real. Uh, this is about to get real tricky and this is about to get real bloody because even though he has not openly said anything, you really think and, and again, we don't know what the deal is with him and Pepper Rollins, but you really think he's about to send a Nash back? To be Pekka Rollins' property? Hell no. That shit is not about to happen. Not about to happen. Nope. <laughs> so, he, um, what Kaz does, he gives her, you know, some money. And she's like, what is this for? He said, we're not the only ones that are in trouble. He was like, you know, I'll I'll put you go go get on this boat go find Alina go help her and she was like you you're sending me away he was like look I'm I'm trying to give you your freedom I'm trying I'm trying to help you get out of this and um you know he he has this thing where he's like okay look this is your problem this is mine I'm I'm gonna fix this and he walks off from her and Jasper and she was like I'm not I'm not gonna leave you not now uh uh-uh. uh and he's sitting there like. Okay, this is this is about to be difficult because I don't know if whatever it is he's about to do, if that's something he wants Inej to be a part of. Because something tells me this is about to get 
ugly. This is about to get bloody. And, you know, he just basically told him, he was like, look, y'all stay in the shadows. We're going to reconvene at such and such place. And um, he's going to look for a heart render, you know, one that isn't owned by Pekka. Now, what heart render do we know that's not owned by Pekka Rollins? Yay! I know, I, I know you were waiting to get to Nina. Let's go! My girl's <laughs> back. My baby's back and it's gonna be some trouble. <laughs> oh, your baby <sighs> trying to get her man that. out of jail and it's not working very hey, well for her. I know, but it's like that whole, that's that was a great scene. It's like, first of all, I was like, I don't think Inez really needed her to save her because I was because she was already looking. She already had that smile on her face. She was like, "Okay, I'm about to cut all you motherfuckers." It, it was going to be a tight spot. I place. think she, I think Inez would have been able to get out of that situation. I love, yeah, absolutely. But I love the timing. I love the timing when the guy was like, "Oh, be still, my heart." <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> like, okay, we can do that. That was awesome. <laughs> we can we can do that. Oh, uh, but wait before before we get to that part as far as Inez. So we we finally see Pekka Rollins and he's talking to the captain of the stat watch who, of course, he has 60 men looking for Kez and Jesper and Inej and they can't find them. So Pekka Rollins, you know, he is, I will tell you this. He's very smooth when it comes to his words. He's very calm and collected. He goes over to the cabinet and he was like, okay, yeah, well, you know, we need to make an example. We need to Make sure that, you know, that the rest of the stat watch understand how important it is that we capture them. He goes and takes a gun out of his cabinet and starts walking. I was like, if that captain hasn't already deduced what the fuck is about to happen, then he don't need to be captain anyway. Because mm -hmm. the man is sitting here talking to you in such a calm way after you just told him that 60 of your men can't find three people. One who walks with a limp and a cane. <laughs> And he walks with that gun. I'm like, this captain needs to, like, he's just sitting there just agreeing with him. And yes, and this, that, and the other. And yes, we're going to do it. And Pekka says something about, you know, um, the whole stat, stat watch will be on him when they see that he has killed one of you with his with, with their own gun. And the captain is like, but he hasn't done. And then Pekka Rollins turns around and shoots him. I was like. No, okay. The first clue should have been like, when he went in the cabinet and got the gun, he was like, you recognize this? He was like, oh, yeah, that's a service revolver. I would have been like, oh, hell no. Like, like why the hell do you have a service revolver? First right. Off. In your ca in a cabinet, just hanging around. Like, yeah. I would have been like, you know what? I'm going to go look for myself. I'm going to personally head up the thing. I'm going to leave, like, now, before you shoot me. But see, then he probably would have shot him in the back. We've been like, oh, that's terrible. He I shot. don't think Pekka Rollins is the shoot in the back type of person. He seems like he's I wouldn't put the type it past him. Uh uh. He I seems put like if the type of person. Uh uh. He seems like the type of person where he is going to kill you, he is going to torture you, and he's going to do it while he's looking at you because he wants his face to be the last thing you remember. He doesn't seem he like the type of person. He should sit back and turn you over while you're dying and be like, look at me. Mm -mm. I'm the living one now. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> nope. But, but yeah, um, I just I was just like, uh, you just don't like be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a service revolver. What are you gonna do with that? Oh, yeah. Like, like again, this man is already pissed off because you can't find the people that he's looking for. So and, and it's not like you don't know who he is and what he's capable of. Right. <laughs> like he's, he's pulling a gun out right. as he's talking to you. Like right. And yeah. I mean, if you think about it, so now that we know Tantaline is dead, it's obvious now that Pekka Rollins had something to do with that. The stat watch probably either helped cover it up or he had people on his payroll that took care of it for him. But again, I feel like Pekka is the type of person he would have done that himself. But then again, he probably didn't feel like Taunt Helene was important enough for him to see to see to it personally. He probably did send some of his people and be like, oh, okay, just go kill her and, you know, place the blame on Brecker and his crew. So, but again, he also had to have had somebody on the inside who knew when Kaz and them got off the boat. 
Because again, they've been out of the country for how long? Months so how would Virginia. you put how would you pin a murder on on them that quickly? Not only pin you pin the murder. Well, then again, you know what? Depending on when Tom Helene was killed, he could have done that right after Kaz and them left. And then they've been wanted this whole time. Yeah, that that, that actually makes more sense. Like, and and that could be the excuse as far as why Kaz and and Jesper and Inez were not in Ketterdam. Like they killed her and then they fled. Yeah, that sounds like something that 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 he would do. But okay, we're gonna we're gonna go to Wyland now. We're gonna meet Wyland. Wyland is the new demolitions expert for the crows. And it's so interesting because when we when we first meet him in this um scene, we find out that he's the one that created the phosphorus bombs that Kaz used to get away from uh Kerrigan. So I was like, okay, this guy has to be really good. But the thing we we talked about this um before we started recording. Wyland, it, it's a weird casting for me. I love the way he plays this character, but he just looks so young. He looks like a kid. And I was just like, I don't know how I feel about this because I know even without watching this, this season, just from the chatter online, Jesper and Wyland are a thing. They are a couple or they become a couple. And I'm just like, he looks so young. They, they become a couple? Mm hmm Yeah. No, oh, I didn't know. Mm hmm Like, like so, couple, couple, like couple with house, like with household couple, like with kids. Like, like they have a past couple. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, but it, yeah it, I agree with you. It's a it's a weird cat. I don't, I don't know if it's just, it, it looks, it, it looks odd. It looks, it looks like, it's, it's kind of like a, High, like a high schooler dating a college student, like kind of weird, or right, even yeah. like. But the funny thing is, there are certain moments, like, and I don't know if it's just the way that he's playing the character, but he reminds me of the way that Eddie Redmayne uh, plays Newt Scamander. Like he has this this innocence about him and this youthfulness about him, but I think in a sense, it's a it's meant to kind of. I don't want to say distract us, but it's meant to kind of deter us because you don't think somebody that cute and innocent could be as deadly with explosives and demolitions as I, I'm thinking Wyland can be. You know, but it is, I don't know, it's just one of those things where there are certain times when he, the way he carries himself, he looks very childlike. And then there are other moments where he makes like, I don't know, he makes an expression with his face and he does look a little bit older. So it's a weird mix, but it's one of those, I was like, wow, he seems like such a kid. And then, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's just, well, I like the well, casting though, but it, it, it just, it throws me off because he does look so, so young. Well, in the, in the books, he is supposed to be, younger but it, it it not that young and you know i told like we said we were talking before my biggest problem is that it seems like when they did the casting they were probably planning for as we know they're doing the six of crows writing maybe to get greenlit a longer series so they probably got actors that they thought that could last longer because what's your biggest problem when you have a hit series yeah. you get the characters at a certain age and i'm going to use the vampire diaries as an example, okay. By the time they got done with the Vampire Diaries, Caroline was thirty, and she was like eighteen when she started. Okay, I'm just using that. I'm just not actually. You know what I'm saying? They I mean, let's go like with something old. more recent. Stranger Things. There you go. There you yeah. go. Millie Brown, exactly. Or so, or even uh, Caleb. Uh, Caleb, like, have you, you seen him lately? I was like, who is this grown ass guy? Right. Right. So the, the, the idea is that they get them young enough, they can go, you know, because they know seasons, years, mm -hmm. COVID. So it's right. possible that that was one of the things they're thinking, because if they do Six of Crows, we're going to get another 
three, maybe four seasons out of just six of crows in addition to Shallow and Mo. So maybe, I don't know. I don't well, know if I'm, it would go that long. Well, I'm just I'm just using it as a generalization. But my thing is, is that I'm thinking that that was the thinking behind that because the kid that plays uh, Jesper now, uh, he looks older than he did in season one. To me, to me, he looks like like a lot older. His face and everything. He doesn't to look me, he older does. to me. To me, he does. Hmm. But maybe that was lighting or whatever. But I, I'm just saying, I'm thinking that's the thinking because you had the same problem Game of Thrones with the kids. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, but, you know, but as far as the casting of this character, I'm excited to see. Uh, I haven't read all the books, but I know enough. And I know that he's going to be an awesome character. And I think that by introducing him in the first episode, I got so excited. I was like, the Scooby, I I guess my big thing is that as we talk about the episode, I got excited because the Scooby gang was coming together. You know, you got one person here. You got one person here. Mm -hmm. You got two people here. The Scooby dad. And I love, and and I know I'm old. But I love seeing the Scooby Gang come together. <laughs> no, not yeah. like not like that. Not like that. Doggone film or show on fucking. Oh HBO God! We're, we're, yeah, we're, and, we're, and by we're, the way, Mike, you were right about that. I told you. I oh, tried. Yeah. I tried to warn you. I wanted to save you because that's. I still haven't got through the first episode. I lasted two minutes. I told you it's I, terrible. I, I, it was horrendous. Mindy Kaling yeah. owes me a personal apology. She needs to come to my house, knock on my door, and beg. And she's one of my favorite people. I love her. This is why I'm so upset. I have no idea what she was thinking or whatever. But anyway, but as far as far as the show, let me just pause this because we're getting a movie. This is too far. But as far as the the show is concerned with the casting and as far as uh, the kid and all this, I'm just excited that we got him in the first episode because because I know what happens to him. I didn't expect to see him until the third or maybe the fourth episode now seeing the twins in the first episode that was a little bit surprising because to me the twins again would have shown up mid or maybe second or third to last episode so so we'll talk about that once you've gotten further because you've only seen the first episode right exactly okay Okay. and you're you're familiar with what happens in the book so once you get a few episodes in and you see like i said they did make some changes from book to screen um that again usually i'm one of those people who holler about why are you changing this but no i actually love everything that they did uh as far as the changes so once we once you get to past a certain point and you see what they are keeping and what they're not keeping it will make more sense uh to you okay okay and i and i may i may have a soapbox stand up rant in about two episodes because i have an idea for me but that's for later okay uh but going back to Wyland, so towards the end of the episode, we see um, we see him in his workshop and Jesper comes in and you can immediately tell like when Wyland sees him uh, and Jesper is like, why did Cass tell us to meet here? He was like, oh, you're here. And Jesper was like, um, he says something about, I, I think he says his name or why are you here or something. To, and Wyland is like, Oh, we, um, you know, the way that he responds and the way that he looks at Jesper, I was like, oh, something that happened between them. Cause we already know Jesper is, um, pretty loose with his, um, with his, his body. He can't he hope. <laughs> I would just say that. I would just say. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> right. We are in 2023. We don't use those words anymore. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. He's sex positive. There you go. He he likes to have he likes to have his fun, and obviously, I feel like him and him and Wyland had had their fun before because it's almost like Wyland was trying to say we've met before, and then he kind of stops and he's like, "No," because I think it's one of those things where it's like, "Okay, well, if you don't remember me, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring this up. It'll be awkward." But the way that he reacts around Jesper, I was like, yeah, th- this this was a thing before. And Jesper is just, I don't know if he's playing like he doesn't know or if he just doesn't remember or if he's just kind of like whatever the case may be. But when Kaz gets there, he was like, 
this is your new this is our new demolitions expert like he names two other people he's like oh they would have been better because yes, like but wyland is the one that i chose and then here comes Inej, and here comes nina and when nina introduces herself both jesper and Inej are like nina zanik like oh we know this name you were the heart render we were supposed to meet at the beginning of our first mission oh <laughs> this is gonna be interesting and i was just like the crows are coming together the crows are coming together because can you imagine like with Nina's with her personality it's going to be interesting just to begin with to see her and how she interacts with the rest of them but to see her and Kaz with Kaz as the leader you know what I'm saying he's so he's so very focused and he's so very serious like I don't think I've seen Kaz break a smile which was so weird because watching the interviews and stuff leading up to season two, Freddie Carter smiles and laughs a lot. So it's so weird watching him in interviews and then seeing him on the screen. I'm just like, he, he like not even a, not even a hint of a smile from Kaz. And Nina is the one who has the smart mouth and she has the smart remarks and the comebacks. I was like, okay, she and Jesper are probably going to be best friends, but her and Kaz, that's going to be an interesting dynamic to see. But you know, he he starts laying out what they need to do, and um, you know, she she kind of tells him she's like, look, um, so if I help you, you have to help me, because I need to get somebody out of Hellgate, which I guess is like Ravka's version of uh, Alcatraz. It's like this this big prison that's kind of in the middle of the water. And we see Matthias being thrown in there. He's protesting that he's innocent. But the thing that got me was Nina was like, she was telling Cash, she was like, no, I have to get him out there. He's like my, he's like the love of my life. I was like, oh, so that means that y'all are going to have some season because she actually said it. So, oh, y'all, y'all about to have some issues this season. Okay. Oh, okay okay two things two things first of all um as a book reader she's not gonna be happy second uh i love the whole jumping in sons of anarchy tattoo on the back thing i was like oh my god that's so wrong because remember you oh yeah this? when oh, they were tattooing I, the prisoners yeah talk about getting jumped in <laughs> i mean seriously that's a major tattoo right there okay yeah, um, that was pretty but, big. But, but, but seeing Matthias, I was like, oh yeah, because what what I loved about the last half is that they re- and, and I was I was on my treadmill and I'm like, man, this is getting long. How long is this episode? Because I didn't check before I jumped on. But my thing is, is that I loved. Again, I know Anthony's got issues, but I love the pacing and I love how they put this together. I mean, it was beat, 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 just drop. I mean, it was, it was like a coloring book, uh, uh, connect the dots on how to set up a premiere episode of a fantasy series and hit all your points and all your beats at the exact time at the exact moment. And it, I'm not saying it was perfect, but it was pretty darn good the way that they did it, especially with Mateus. It really was. See, yeah. It, I mean, it was good. It was that good. Especially with the way they introduce the new characters, um, because you you get them in there kind of briefly, but but long enough for you to establish, OK, th- these are who these people are like the twins. When Mal and Alina get to the um, when they get to the, the uh, dock, they see a boat that's flying no flags and they're like, oh, that's a pirate's boat. We can we can try to uh, see if we can get on this boat. And. The twins are there. And I was like, oh, so this is where they kind of come into the story and how they're going to meet up with Alina and Mal. Okay, this is going to be cool. And then the same thing with Wyland. Like, we know that Cass went to go see Wyland earlier before the group got together. And when he tells Nina, he was like, I'm going to need you. And she was like, for what? He says, the aftermath. And then he turns around, he walks off. And Inez takes on the personality of Jesper at that point. She was like, he does this. You know, because that's what Jesper always says about her. Like, yeah, that's the kind of thing she does. She does this. So they go out to the roof and Cash just looks out and he says brick by brick and everybody else is looking like, what the hell is going on? And then you see an explosion and they're trying to figure out like, what the hell was that? 
And Inej says the Crow Club. So basically, Cass just blew up his own club rather than have Pekka Rollins inhabit it. I was like, wow, that's some that's some deep seated hatred shit. Like you just you just blew up your your own club. Well, he's got good reason because of Pekka Rollins. Yes, he definitely really, really does. I'm but sure. At the, but at the same time, and this is something that I have been working with, you know, working on my own, you know, personal, you know, growth uh, of not being petty. That was some petty ass shit right there. I'm sorry. That just was. That's well, you didn't see nothing yet. I mean, just like, you know, what, what was it he said? Um, and Inez was like, that's not going to help us, you know, clear our name. He's still the king of the barrel. And Kaz is like, the barrel doesn't belong to kings. It belongs to bastards. He was like, we about, we about to get this fucker. I was like, okay. Kaz is on a mission. I know I know we're going to see what the deal is. But I was like, this dude, the, the look in his eyes, like we've seen Kaz determined before. We've seen him focused. The look in his eyes now is almost like, I don't want to say he's unhinged. But there is a little bit of crazy there. Like, whatever it is about Pekka Rollins that brings out that in him, it's like surfacing. And not only just because, oh, okay, Pekka Rollins has been in the barrel and he's been doing this, but now he has taken everything that you had in the barrel that you thought you were coming back to. What was it Jesper said? I had some really nice coats and hats in there. Oh, I was was laughing because he said like two or three times. Mm -hmm. But see, the thing with Pekka, and again, book reader, and I'm not going to say anything because that's not what I'm going to do. But all I'm going to say is that Pekka Rollins is probably one of the most despicable characters that you're ever going to see on the screen just because of how he rolls. Not what he does currently or not what he's going to do in, in the future, but what he's done in the past. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know what happened to Cass and I know why he is the way he is. But the way that they set it up in, in the, the police van, the way that you see him last season with the gloves and the way that you that flash, it, it, it's it's literally pro- probably one of the most beautiful scenes that they could take from book to screen. Mm-hmm. And I could think of a couple of Star Wars things in between that rival that. But it was it was just so I know I'm gushing, but it was so good the way that they set this whole thing up at Pekka Rollins. If I was him, oh boy, barely town with the quickness because he's about to get, as they would say, get got. I, I think I don't think that's going to happen because he just the the little bit that we have seen from from him, season one and in this first episode, he really feels like he's the shit, and that he's on top of the world and no one can touch him. And I feel like even with Kaz blowing up the Crow Club. One, he's gonna know that Cass did that. I mean, if you don't, if you don't know that Cass did that, you're not paying attention. Duh. Because yeah. Cass is basically what he just did was basically, well, if I can't have it, you can't either. Like you said, right. Lori, <laughs> petty, 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 petty one on one. Yeah. But I feel like Pekka one. Oops. He doesn't. Re- from what we remember in the last season. He doesn't he doesn't know who Cass is. So whatever his um whatever his his past is with Cass, he doesn't remember. He doesn't know Cass. So like I said, I'm assuming even last season, I assumed this had to take him, this had to have taken place when Cass was younger and didn't look the way that he does now. And of course, now that we see his his flashbacks, Pekka has something to do with the reason why Cass was on that raft with all those dead bodies. I don't know if he threw him out thinking that he was dead or what the case was. Did he kill all the people on the bodies? We don't know that yet. But something about Pekka is connected to a deeply traumatic event in Kaz's life. Kaz is aware of what that is and what the connection is. Pekka is not. So I I feel like Pekka is going to be the type of person he's going to try to figure out, okay, what the fuck does this Cass Brecker do and have against me? I need to find out so I can just go ahead and just kill him and be done with it. But right now, Cass is like, he's that he's that annoying little gnat that's flying around your face and you just keep swatting at it and it keeps coming back. 
that's what Kaz is going to be to him for a minute. He's going to be that pesky little thing that keeps getting in your business. And then you can't catch him. You have a whole police force out looking for him and they haven't been able to find him. Yeah, Pecker Rollins is about to meet his match. Yeah. Hey, I just Lori. hope that I just hope that this descent into madness that we see Cass slowly going into, I hope that that doesn't backfire on him. Yeah. Mm. Hey, Lori. Yeah. Um, Cass is Nate Ford now, hundred percent. Hundred percent agree. He, Nate, Nate Ford. Ford. Leverage. Nate Ford. Leverage. leverage. Mm. And, not, um, and yeah. Yeah. Is is is. And- it's going that way, and I'm I'm hundred percent here for it. And not only is it going that way, it, it it's leaning toward you know them up you know about ready to stand off the side and say let's go steal a, you know exactly. It, I mean it, it's <laughs> it's so good, and and I know I'm gushing, but Mike's right. It is it it's giving me leverage. It's giving me leverage redemption all the way with the crows. But see, I'm mad though because when he says it belongs to the bastards. I'm going in my head. I want him to say it belongs to the crows. He should have said that instead at the end. And that would have made it picture perfect, in my opinion. Well, I I, I kind of, I thought that too. Um, when he turned around, I thought that's what he was going to say. And when he said it belongs to the bastards, because I think in Kaz's mind, yes, he has this singular focus on Pekka, but I don't think, I think for him, that's not all that it's about. It's about, you know, the Tantalines and the, whoever, uh, the name of the other owner of, you know, the place uh, that the other heart render was from. I think it, it, it's, it's about the people who Pekka now, quote unquote, own. It's about the Inezes. You know, it's about the other people who are affected by Pekka's reign as, quote unquote, king of the barrel. And I think... Yes, he wants to get rid of Pekka for his own reasons, but also Pekka being in charge of the barrel makes it a more fearful place for for everyone to be. Whereas before, you saw Cass had his own little empire. Tantalin had her own little thing. These people had their own things and they were coexisting. They were successful. They weren't ruling things in fear. You know what I'm saying? And with Pekka at the helm, that's going to take a totally different, a totally different turn. I mean, you think about it. He just killed the, he just killed a police officer because the police officer couldn't find somebody for him. So if he would do that to an officer of the law, what would he do to the little people? He would snuff them out just as quickly because what they can't do this or they can't pay him or they, that he has no use for those people. So I think in, in Kaz's mind, he's probably thinking about that because depending on what the situation was with him and his brother, um, I mean, yeah, I, I just feel like it's, it's about a bigger picture for him, not just about getting back at Pecker Rollins, but also bringing, restore, restoring the barrel to what it was. Okay, okay, Hanako. I I've only seen one episode, and I know you've seen the whole thing. I'm non spoiler. Do they show in detail what happens? Yes. Is it as far as far as Kaz's backstory? Yeah. Yes. Is it as heartbreaking as it is in the book? I I haven't read the Six of Crows book, so I don't know. But it but it is like it it is one of those things when when you. What you said about Pekka Rollins being like a despicable human, yeah, yep. you, yeah, it's kind of like you fucker. You I cry. You deserve you deserve everything that that yeah. you get. So yeah, I I literally cried for a good half hour after I listened to it on audio uh, uh, on Audible. I mean, I when I say I was pissed, yeah, I was pissed. And so yeah, they do, they do go into the backstory it, it, and and then it, you know it's interesting because once you get that backstory, you kind of see 
you see what makes Cass the way he is mm -hmm. with certain right. certain behaviors and stuff. It's just kind of like, right. whoa, right. you go back and you rethink the whole first season and certain things that he mm -hmm. did and certain mm -hmm. things that happened in this season. It's just like, this fucker needs a therapist. Like, yeah, yeah. for real. And, and, and not only does he need a therapist, you know that 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 thing where a kid gets bullied or beat up and mm -hmm. they finally get a chance to take a stick or hit the bully and they get so angry that they basically kill the bully. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That needs to happen. Yeah. I'm just saying, but um, so let me ask you this. Cause again, this is you know, the thing. So with, with going back to the whole thing with the crows and the demolition and blowing up and all of that. And what's the setup? My question is, is that do they or are they going to really send the guard or the police after them for what they did to the crow club because they've already been arrested once they've already been accused of murder they've already know that they're on the run and when uh jasper says at the earlier season earlier episode part of the episode should we send a message to alina i'm like well how are you going to get a message to her I mean, I mean that's the same I mean, thing. That's the same question Kaz asked. He was like, "How are we going to get a message to her? Like, right, we don't even know right, where she right. is right now." Right. So, like, yeah, yeah, she was on her way to know right. these them, but right. she could have left after that. She could have gone somewhere else. She could have gone to Shuhan. She could have gone to right. Mm -hmm. right. So, so, so yeah. So it's basically okay. You guys have made a definitive decision with blowing up. You know you're already on the run. We know Alina and Mal are on the run. We know that Nina has joined them. Matthias is in jail. We know that Inez is like, he gives her a way out. She gives him the money back. And she says, no, I'm rolling with you, which is cool. Because we knew mm -hmm. that's what she was going to do. And and they just set it up in such a way that I'm looking at this episode. I'm like, man, I kind of wish that I could take the entire week off just to watch this. Because this is some good stuff. I, mean, I did it in two days. And only well, oh, let me tell you, only because so I started watching it Thursday night after we finished our um Last of Us Gamers episode. So I I started maybe around 11 o'clock and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna watch the first episode. Yeah, we knew that wasn't happening. <laughs> so I watched four episodes and then went to bed. And then got up, went to work. Wow. Yeah, I watched four episodes Thursday night. Wow. Got up, went to work. I wasn't feeling good. I wasn't feeling good Thursday night, like right around that time. So I was kind of laying down. No, seriously, I was not. So I was laying in bed watching it. And then by Friday, two o'clock, I couldn't even sit at my desk. I was in so much pain. I was like, okay, I can't do this. I have to go home and get in my bed. Like it took everything I had to get in my car and drive the seven minutes to my house. I got in the bed and I was like, okay. I, I turned on my laptop. I started watching. I literally was watching it like this at first because I was like, I don't even know if I'm be able to stay awake. I'm I, I'm hurting that much. I think I maybe stopped in between episode five and six and kind of just took a rest for about twenty minutes. And then I just, I watched the rest of the episodes because I was like, I'm in the bed. It's not like I have to exert any energy. If I get tired, mm -hmm. I'll just cut it off and go to sleep. But I sat there and watched the rest of the episodes and I was just like, wow. And then I was on my couch. Mike messaged me and he was like, I'm about to start episode three now. So I started watching episode three <laughs> over with him. And I was how many like, episodes? Because I, have, I haven't eight. actually checked. How many episodes? Eight. Okay, there's eight episodes. It okay. is eight. Yeah. All right, oh, yeah. so you figure out what was wrong it's with you I, I have chronic illness so it's just the, the weather has been changing like we've been getting 60 70 degree weather in the daytime and then we have freeze warning at night for like the last mm -hmm. four nights so my body is like bitch make up your mind i'm like i'm not doing this i'm not doing <laughs> not this me. i so can't control it having, but see, so you're basically see, okay. having the same weather as us okay so on Friday, I'm like, hey, Hanako, are you in your office? Have you had lunch? She's like, yeah, I just finished my lunch. I said, okay, I'm going to be over there in a few minutes. I go over there. I buzz once. I'm so sorry. I buzz I twice. Let me tell you, because I think <laughs> at that point, like 30, maybe 45 minutes had passed. I had already left because when I tell you I was sitting at my desk because I thought I was going to feel better after eating. I was sitting at my desk trying to work like this, and I was like, I can't yeah. even do it. 
You, you know what my thought was? What? This bitch then went home to watch Shadow and Bone. <laughs> <laughs> that was not my intention. It just happened to be what I was able to do because I was in. I couldn't. When I when I tell y'all, I walked my happy ass all the way over to the, to to the place. Buzz your door. You act like you had a long ass walk. <laughs> Anthony, Anthony, how do you think I finished watching Flash season one? Okay, I got sick and I had to go home, and I was home for two days. Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah, saying. I mean, yeah, that's the best yeah. time because literally yeah. nothing can nothing can stop you except for your own body. Like I said, when I got too tired or my my eyes got too heavy, I would pause it <clears throat> and, and just kind of give myself a rest. I might have dozed off once for about 20 minutes, and then I woke up and I was like, okay, I feel I feel a little bit better, but yeah. like I still couldn't like getting up to walk to the bathroom was was mm. hard on me because my yeah. whole body was sore. So I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna lay in this bed. And then I got too hot, so I went downstairs and laid on the couch, and that's where I watched the the finale. And I was just like, am I already at the end? Like really? Mm -hmm. And then I looked, I was like, oh. I'm already at the end. I don't know what to do. So now I'm really considering going back and rereading the books just to kind of, ah. because like I said, there are, there are some, there are some minor differences and then there are some major differences from the books to the show. But well, well, I wasn't mad at the changes. I was like, Oh, this makes so much sense, especially because you're having to put the crows into the story where they weren't right, before. Right. So right. there are certain things and it's, I mean, you do this with a lot of um, a lot of properties where you'll have characters doing certain things in the book. But when it comes to the show or when it comes to the movie, mm -hmm. they have those tasks uh, done by other characters. So there were some things that, um, like I said, they're changed. There were some additions to the storyline that made sense for the story they were telling. There were some omissions from the book story that at first I was a little confused by. And then I was like, you know what? I really don't miss that that much. Um, there are some characters throughout the season that I that I noticed we do not see in this season. And I don't know what the reasons for those characters not being seen Um you know, I mean, there's a lot going on. There's a war. You have, uh, you know, the fold has extended into Nova Kabirsk. You have Grisha who are being hunted. So it, it's just a lot of different things going on. And I was just like, okay, let's see how they're going to play this out. And then when I watched it, I was like, yep, not bad at all. Not mad at all. Like these are changes that I feel enhance the story and i mean we discussed this with the first season as well you know the books were good right but they were lacking certain things and i know i will say this there there's one part of the story that they don't do in the show the way they did in the book and anthony will be glad because it involves a lot of walking and a lot of traveling <laughs> so they they changed that up a little bit. So that that was pretty good. Um, you know, but we said it with the first season, the way that they made certain changes, the way that they add a little more diverse cast, the way that they added the Six of Crows into the story where they weren't in the books, it enhances the story. And I feel that they did that with the second season too. Now, here's the other thing. Lee Bardugo. Okay, mm -hmm. Shadow and Bone was her very first novel. That was her debut novel. Mm -hmm. Okay, she has created three books in the Grisha verse. She created the two books for um, Six of Crows. Then she right. created King of Scars. That's all within right. the Grisha verse. Then she right, created right. a set of adult novels that um, I believe are also being adapted into, I believe, a show. She Grisha just no? signed a contract with Macmillan for eight figures and oh so they went to figures so they went yes. the john scalzi route with her ah that's it look anthony is like he's he, like yes carry the, look carry the <laughs> one and yes eight that, figures they went the john scalzi route because john scalzi as soon as he did old man's war as soon as he did red shirts they signed him to this huge multi-million dollar contract and everybody was like why because no one really read scalzi until he got that contract. Oh well, you know she. Like the biggest thing ever. Yeah, she doesn't have that problem because all of her books have been have been like bestsellers. 
Well, so, all of his books were bestsellers, but no one paid attention is what I'm saying. Yeah, but like that's what I'm saying. Thing. People pay attention yeah. to her books. Like, to her stuff. Like, right. you, you have this whole, uh, again, you've got two seasons of Shadow and Bone. The way that they ended it, I will say it could be closed. Like they they could have closed it on season two, or mm -hmm. it could they left it open for season three. It depends on the way that you look at the story. And mm -hmm. then now that we know that the the showrunner has been writing a Six of Crows, you know, spinoff just in case they can get it greenlit. I'm like, yeah, you know, you know it will so be. Much. Yeah, they there's so well, I, I mean, this is Netflix. As yeah, popular yeah. as um, yeah, yeah, the Sandman yeah. was, it took months before they got a renewal. Right, right. So but I will, yeah. I agree. Even though they have the numbers, even if they have the numbers, it might still be months before we know whether or not Shadow and Bone was was oh. renewed. So, but uh, yeah. But see, Hanako, here's the thing, and, and I know I'm gushing, and this is bordering on a discovery which is gushing. Okay, because you know how much we all <laughs> love that. Because and I'm still mad that we didn't get the spin off, but that's a different story. Not yet. Um, we we may still get it. Who, you never know. Oh, oh they, we're they, gonna speak it into existence. All right, because I'm telling you, they need to do it. But anyway, uh, see, here's the thing: Game of Thrones walked so Shallon Bone could run because the writing staff, the ideas, the conceptual ideas, the merging. When I say that they have literally outdid themselves on putting together the concept of Shell and Bone, season one, season two, and just the way that it's near perfect, the way that they put it. I mean, we love fantasy. At the base, we're Harry Potter fans. Okay, that's the base. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'm a little different because I'm Harry Potter, but comic books a little bit more than you guys are. But I'm Harry Potter. So the fact that we love that, but the fact that they brought this show and it's Netflix, doesn't Hulu, wasn't anything else. And the fact that they said, hey, the books need more padding, but her story is good, but we need something else. And they intentionally brought in the crows and it padded it in such a way that it made it a completely different show. And now that we're in season two, I'm sitting there going, man. I know you 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 think I had COVID. I say I had the flu. I was out for two weeks. I worked two days and two weeks. That's how sick I was. I watched the entire season. I watched all of Grimm in that time because I was bored. I should have watched Shaolin Bone because I wasn't paying attention to when it was coming back. But I'm telling you, I get so excited just watching them do a single episode because of the way that they combined it and made it a cohesive, understandable relatable storyline i can't wait for you to see the rest of the season because you're gonna oh, be you're gonna oh. be messaging me you're gonna be messaging me and mike you had, like you're only on episode four so you you've just like barely scratched what's going on because um i, I just got i just got past yeah so you just okay so okay I remember what part you said you are. Yeah, you've like barely scratched the surface. There's going to be some things that happen in episode five and especially episode six. You're going to be like, wait, wait, what, what? But there, there are some things that we discussed from last season too that that kind of make an appearance in this season. I'm not going to say what it is, but there, there are some there are some things that are going to that you're going to be like, aha, I knew it. And then there are going to be some things that you're like, oh, that's a total surprise. And it just like, I, you know, it's one of the shows that I like, yeah, I, I, I will equate it to like the way that we were uh, excited about a discovery of witches. I know Anthony is not quite there with, with this series, but that's okay. I think the three of us have enough enthusiasm for him. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting there. You're okay. getting there? Okay. You're getting there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, this this season was oh, if I could have stayed up all night Thursday and still made it to work on Friday, I would have binged the whole thing. Like I was so mad at myself when I realized, but but I think when we when we talked about doing our podcast recording, I again, it didn't dawn on me that it was going to that the show was going to release on a Thursday. 
So I was thinking, okay, we'll do the podcast recording on Thursday, Friday. I don't have to go out. I'm not going Uber. I'm going to sit and just binge watch the whole thing. And then I was like, wait, what? But I didn't want to cancel the podcast recording. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to have to split it. And that was torture. But it was, it was so, so good. And when I say the casting, the casting department for this show, they get it right. They they get it right. Again, Toga and um and Tamar, I mean Toya and Tamar are like, they are two of my favorite in this show now. You get to see like other characters from season one come back in season two. And it's just like yeah. Um the guy who's playing picture, Sturm like- Han, I love him. And then once, you know, we get further in the season, I, yeah, it's just no, the next episode. He, you, you're like, yeah, oh. yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. I just, they, and then there's like the episode after such, that, you're like, oh, they've done such a great job with the casting with this story, and again, the way that they are telling the story and combining elements from both both groups, and you know, m- making some changes, and it, it's just I. I love what they did with this season. Like, I I understand the gushing part, Lori. It was, it was just like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, I just, I really want to go back and rewatch the season again. Like, I, I need to watch it and I need to just take it in. And I'm just, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I can't wait for y'all to watch the rest of the, rest of the season. It's so great. But yeah, um. I don't know. Do we do we have anything else we want to say about the first episode? No, <laughs> we did. We we missed the missed the most important part. What? Which part? About about the man coming back. Oh, about oh, oh we didn't yes, we did. At all, did we? Yes, we did not. Part? We started the gushing. Yes, we gotta talk you're about right. this. You're right. <laughs> so yeah, some of the first army. Oh, these have... assholes! I was not mad about any of this shit that happened either. They have some of the Grisha locked in cages and they're torturing them. And Jenya happens to be one of the Grisha. They've got them, you know, locked with their arms apart so they can't so they can't do anything. And all of a sudden you hear this you, you hear this noise and you see this shadow come out of the fold. And it's Kirigan and his shadow monsters. And I mean I, I'm going to say, I feel like the way they did the shadow monsters in the show, I think it makes sense. But in the books, I imagine them maybe a little scarier because I think in the books, they were actually part of, like, they were part vocal as well. So I think they had wings. Scarier? Y- yeah. But I mean, scarier? I mean I mean, oh my God, I can't yeah. imagine. Yeah, they they literally go through and they kill all of the people, and you know, Kirigan comes out and he he does his little speech. This is so so we're back to this again. Like, oh, so they're persecuting Grisha again. Oh, okay, that's not about to happen. And he frees all of them, and he was like, "Look, we can do this. We can go, we can take you know we can take our country back for us. We can make sure that they never treat the Grisha like this again. Follow me, blah blah blah." And Jenya, that poor child, she looks so fucking scared. Because first of all, she's looking at him like, you survived the fucking fold. She looks terrified. She she's looks terrified. so scared. But what can she do at this point? He reaches out his hand to her. And she takes his hand like, what? What? what is she going to do? First of all, he just rescued her. From whatever it is the first army was about to do, they were probably kill him. That's what they've been doing to Grisha. They were going. Th- well, they were going to leave him there. Yeah, they were. They were, but they were also going. Well, if Orca can't leave the fault, yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, they were going to kill him. But see, with her, not only was she terrified, she kind of you could see she put the pieces together, and I think that she realized that old oh boy is the one that actually is the problem. Yeah. You know? She's yeah. not dumb. She's not dumb. Yeah, because she was not uh she was not on the ship with them, I don't think. No, she wasn't. So no. she wouldn't have seen 
what he did to Alina or, or, you know, past what he did to Alina. But I think she kind of sort of knew a little bit of what he was going to do because she saw what he had done to Alina with the, you know, with the stag horns. So she knew that he was capable of evil. I just don't think she understood the magnitude of no. what he was capable of. And at this now, point, she I think still, she's got it now. Yeah. I think she got but it. But I think now, at though. this point, she still doesn't even know that he was the one that created the foe. Most of them still don't know this. No. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm starting to turn for on him like in with Jesper. Because like if you think about his origins, like how he started with the Grisha being persecuted and, and everything he's doing to kind of protect them. Okay, he's a little corrupted and maybe a little bit, you know, warped about how he's doing it. But then he comes out and he's like, the first thing he sees is Grisha in cages. And he's like, yeah, we're back to this now. So it's like all the work he did for the, the thousand years or so he's been doing it. You turn around and we're right back where we started. But they're right back where they started because of what he did. Well, they started where they are because of what happened. But, there, but they are. He, 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 he did what he did in response, in response to what happened to him and but, what happened to the person that he loved. Okay, Anthony, you know? I love you. And we, we can keep keep. Y'all want me to like Jesper or not? But, but, <laughs> but every, take everything, everything too, causes too. everything. They're in this situation right now because of him. And he did what he did because of previous things. But previous things put them in this current situation. They're in this current situation because of what he did. We're going to go around in this circle all day and all night. But no, I got to go to I work mean, tomorrow. So we can You're only, like you're right only going to go in that circle for uh, a few episodes. Because when you know, the terrorists, the terrorists did become a terrorist because they started out as a terrorist, they started out as a terrorist because they were being persecuted you'll, against. You'll, right, you'll, under, you'll understand okay, Mandarin, in a few episodes, down. you'll understand it. It's, I'm, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Kerrigan. I okay. get what you're saying, though. I right, get what right you're now, saying. Right now, Kerrigan is, is, is a sympathetic individual. I get what you're saying, but I, I'm just going to say this. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I mean, y'all want me to like, you got to no, take no, this. No. It, it has, has nothing to do with Jasper. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're getting into it. I mean, I'm still, not having, I'm still not having sympathy for his ass, but that's fine. You can have sympathy for him all you want to. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna say it's it's a very as long as you're into it, I don't care. It's a very interesting uh it's a very interesting story. And I'll just leave it at that. But yeah. <laughs> okay. But I I love the way that they put all of the major players in this first episode. Like you said, um they didn't t I don't think I I don't feel like they took too much time with any one particular story. Like everybody who is going to be a major player in this season, they put them all in this episode. The ones oh, that are new. So so no airbender. We're not gonna have her. Zora. Well, I, well okay, let me put it like this on 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 this side as far as these people. Oh, okay. We'll we'll get some other people in, yeah. you know. Because I'm a bail on the show. If I I mean I got our nails, okay. I got Zoya Zora. I don't have is, Zora we will She's see coming. Zoya back. Relax. I Zoya, will just, yeah. Zoya. Okay. No. We will see Zoya. You will see Zoya. Yeah. But I um, gotta give me something. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you I, will get I, your I, Zoya, I Zoya back. Job, you will get your Zoya back. You will get your Zoya back. But yeah, I, I mean, like I said, they put all the major, all the major pieces on, on, um, on the board, and the way that they introduced them, like you said, Lori, it, it, it was damn near perfect. If you think mm -hmm. about how, you know, sometimes when you introduce characters, the, w the way they can be brought in can be kind of like clunky or it can be like, okay, is this person really going to be important? And, and you don't feel like any of these characters, when they're brought in, you don't really feel like they're filler characters. You know what I'm saying? 
It's like right, right. just the way that they come in, like Sturmhan, the way he comes in, mm -hmm, you know, he's kind of mm -hmm. stealthy. And then once he's revealed, you see all of his cockiness just out there. He's just like, oh, yeah. So you already know this is going to be one of those characters that you're going to like despite himself mm -hmm. because he's so right. cocky. He's so yeah. arrogant, but he's yeah. so charming that you're not going to be able to help but like him. Toya right. Uh, Toya and Tamar, the the way that they come in and they show them walking and they're looking at each other and they're eating, it's just like one of those things where they're supposed to be these big badasses, but they're sitting there, you know, they're sitting there uh, snacking and and joking with each other. It's like, oh, okay, this is going to be an interesting dynamic. And then you have, you know, your crows. You've got Nina now a part of the crows or she may be a part of the crows, but she's hanging with them now. So, you know, that's about to just be some, that's about to be some badass shit. You got a heart render, you got a duress because now J Jesper's thing is, well, maybe not quite out in the open, but Kaz knows. And that's the right. important thing. Right. So but, yeah, it's but, just, I'm just, I'm but, ready for it. But Hanako, there is one minor quibble that I had. Now, maybe because I had already done seven miles and I was working on mile eight and nine on the treadmill. I did not get, and I admit I might've missed it, but searching for the C whip, that wasn't explained to my satisfaction because I'm sitting there going, what C whip? What are they talking about? I couldn't remember. Well, I think they mentioned that they mentioned the amplifiers last season when they talked about Morozova's, uh, you know the okay pit. well they okay because they didn't explain it well enough because i spent the entire episode going what the hell is the sea whip yeah i don't think in this episode they didn't i think they mentioned it in the last season and they mentioned that he had several amplifiers i think when she was if i'm not mistaken when she was having the conversation with the apparatus and right. he was showing her Morozova's, right, right. you know, he was giving right. her the the history of the bone smith and Morozova using, you know, his finger bones to amplify and all this other right, stuff. Right, right, so right. So I think right. they mentioned it back then. They don't really touch on it in this episode, but I think if I remember correctly, I've only watched the episodes once. They do go into a little more detail about um about the C whip and then about the third amplifier once that um once that comes okay. into the conversation. Okay, because that was the only thing that bothered me about this episode because I'm sitting there going, did I miss something? Okay. Because I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there racking my brain going, okay, I kind of know what they're talking about, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm like 65%. I know that they're talking about an amplifier, but is this like a a, a a old guy in a banyan tree somewhere with you know gray hair, you know, dungy, you know, oh, with see a, whip. Oh, you know, I'm yeah, serious. It's it's Rafiki, yeah, you know, Rafiki now that I think about it, like shaking his little things, like, right? Yeah, yeah, now that I think about it, you might be, you might be right. I don't think, like, I know that they talked about the fact that he had uh, several ample, you know, several animals as amplifiers. I don't really think they talked about it in detail about her getting the second amplifier. So that may have been a conversation that they had once they got on the ship and she started mm. talking about needing to bring down the fold. Mm -hmm. She knows she's not powerful enough. Okay, well, maybe we can do a second amplifier. And I think maybe that's why when when she starts talking about it, um, when they're in line, Mal says to her, but wait, we we still don't know what this what this will do. Th this has never been attempted by any Grisha before having two amplifiers. So I guess right. It seemed like we got in. we got into a conversation that they had already had. Yeah, mm. like right, we right, missed right. we missed the the pre we missed the conversation between season one and episode right, one of season right. two. Right. Now that you say, yeah, actually... it, it does feel like that. So yeah, maybe maybe they they did kind of drop the ball on that, but. Um. Yeah. I, also, too, I think if it's it's one of those things where I feel like they meant for that conversation to be the inform the informative conversation for us. But but yeah, the way that they kind of approached it, yeah, I, I do admit that was kind of maybe not written in the best way. But yeah, so basically, they're looking for a second amplifier. So yeah, see whip. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's like yeah, a little. I, 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 I'm guessing it. It's supposed to be like some kind of like 
maybe like uh what was the uh the sea dragon in um shang chi it is yeah. oh, supposed to be okay. similar to that right right like a water okay. dragon or something yeah is okay. that sort of what the the watermark looked like mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. did it did right yeah because yeah. the first amplifier she basically got a port put in her neck so yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> And by the way, I still have issues with him doing that to her. I'm just uh, that's the uh, whole reason. That's the whole reason why I feel I'm like I still don't understand how people are shipping Kirigan and Alina. But that's a conversation for a whole other day because we exactly. could be here forever. Exactly. No, we ain't doing that. See, about I've that. learned my lesson, dog, on it. I, I feel like I'm not going to ship anybody. I, I really want to ship people, but I'm not going to do it again because of that shit. I'm no, like, you can ship people. You just can't ship people who think that it's okay to take another person's power for themselves or a person who thinks it's okay to give an 11 year old girl to the king for his sexual pleasures that you can't ship that guy with anybody. Else. I know any of that. <laughs> how was I supposed to know any, how was I supposed to figure that out? How? Just, I didn't even know that until I figured out that he what, was a douchebag. Okay. What was the term I used? It was something, something pimp. Yes. Oh, Romeo Pimp. Yes, Romeo Pimp. Yeah. There you go. Romeo Pimp. There you go. <laughs> All day long. Oh my God. Yeah, but we won't go into that conversation. No, Just no, yeah. No. Um, but yeah, um, I I'm excited to talk about the rest of this season. I can't wait for y'all to get caught up and for those chats yeah. to happen. Cause yeah, oh and God. then we have the season now, so we can actually do our panel at Conjuration this year. Because last year was kind of like, um, yeah. So when we submitted this panel, we thought second season was gonna be. <laughs> but yeah, we'll we'll yeah. get to talk about it. Yeah, I'm so excited. But uh, let's see. It, you guys have anything final to say about episode one? Anthony, are you are you getting there? Are you getting there? I'm, I'm like no, I'm, I'm so I'm happy kidding. about the fact that you that you're not just hating on Jesper now. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm I think I'm going to be cool with Jesper. He. Yeah, I think as so long too. as he keeps as long as he keeps the snark to an appropriate level. I love I'll be all right. snark though. That's one of the charming things about him because it's always too, too appropriately much, placed. Well, not too much. It's yeah. always appropriately placed. Every line can't be a snark. <laughs> <laughs> this how we'll, this is what it felt like last season. Every time he opened his mouth, you were just started. being overly sensitive. I really were. <laughs> I mean, I just for saved the day it. countless times, and all you can think about is his snark. I mean, the fact that he he shot the he he his shots helped him help them get out of the fold, and you, all you can think about is snark. He was the one that had the Sun Summoner in a trunk in the back of the stagecoach. And all you think about is the snark. He didn't put the Sun Summoner in there. She kidnapped <laughs> herself. So don't hey, get, he's not I getting can. no credit. He's busy he banging the stable the boy. No, I, and again, she's climbing into the trunk to get away. Again, I give him all the credit for he noticing no that credit. she crawled into the no trunk. No credit. And, he's and I give the credit. Coach. He gets all the credit for it. I don't care. the fold was as much um as much credit goes to the goat than it does to him you're absolutely oh, oh, right oh, oh, hey oh, you're absolutely oh, right anthony anthony mike did you notice the scene where jesper was in the street and they had gone separate ways and he looked at the pig i'm thinking the pig yeah, is a new goat i, did. I thought that was hysterical <laughs> I was like, the pig can't replace the goat. Come on. I now. think he was just trying to figure out where the hell the Nash disappeared to again. The goat gets all the credit. <laughs> so sorry. Y'all, like, just... you're you're giving Jesper too much credit for oh, cheating no, with his giving bullets. Him exactly the credit oh, he deserves. Whatever. You're gonna love See, Jesper. Y'all trying end to put. Season. You know what? I'm you calling. You just say. You could have just said. Cool, Anthony, but no, you had to go there and see that one extra line, and now you got me backtracking on Jesper again. That's you okay. You're, no, you're gonna love late. Jesper by the end of the season. I, I'm calling it. Okay. I'm calling okay. it. So okay. yeah. But All right, anyway. dude, now, now that we now that we know that he, I keep calling him an artificer because I play D and D. I'm like because he's that, a they're duress, but he's basically an artificer. Yeah, like, he basically is. But you know, the fact that he's untrained and the fact that it's sort of like one of those because technically he's only half because his father, uh, his mother, 
uh, one of the parents was a farmer. But my thing is, is that uh, how cool is he? You know, and the fact that they didn't, you know, keep it a secret. They's like, okay, episode one, this is what he is. But see, I, and again, I need to get back into the books, but I'm questioning whether or not there is a whole group of untrained Grisha that has like either sided with something or they have their own little thing because that's a whole untapped series of books that she could just write. I'm just yeah, saying. I mean, I you have to think about it because a lot of the Grisha didn't, you know, the ones that escaped right, right. because they didn't want to become part of the second army. Right. You know, there's got to be some Grisha out there who mm-hmm. are untrained or who mm-hmm. may have been trained and are keeping it secret. So I'm sure he's not the only one. And we don't even know I think, why. I think that most- and we don't even know why he's keeping it a secret. I think most of the people in God, what's what's the where 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 was the crows? Where's where's where they're Ketterdam. Where the crows Ketterdam. Are Ketterdam. And most of the people in Ketterdam are are like half Grisha or like undercover Grisha. Because I mean, think about it. It's like you have the people, the girls in the brothel who can convince guys to give them money and do all this other stuff. It's like I mean, they're they might be heartbenders to turn their hearts certain ways, or it's like, especially in the casino, in the in the clubs where they're gambling, it's like it's real easy to get the dice to roll a certain way, or get the roulette wheel to stop at us to roll to turn a certain way to to well, make the ball hit a certain number. I mean, no, that, well, see if you're caught if you're caught doing that, they're gonna kill you. But yeah, but what 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 the people? But I think, no. but but didn't Kerrigan them? They had a bounty for people to bring them Grisha, so they take them to the little palace. So if you don't want to go to the little palace, you're gonna hide. You're gonna keep shut oh. about yeah, you know, you're, your you're, power. Yeah. yeah, right. But think, but think about it like this: What if the people who are running Ketterdam are partial Grisha, and they and they this the only, only people they kill are people who are gonna draw attention to them. Mm-mm. They don't because necessarily have think to about kill it. people who are doing it. They're killing. They're killing people who are drawing attention to the fact that. Because Pekka Rollins could be could be a Grisha for all we know, and he's he's killing other Grisha who are drawing attention to him no. because he doesn't want them to come and get him. No, no. I, because I don't, I don't know much I about the universe, like, but that, I don't think that's how that universe. Pekka is not Grisha. Works. Yeah, and I'm and I'm gonna say. I mean, if you think about it, the fact that when Dreesen was looking for a heart render. There was only one heart render that they knew about in the area, and that's the one that was at the brothel, not the menagerie, but the other brothel. I feel right. like if there was another Grisha there, because I think the Grisha can sense each other, just like the Zemini woman, uh, the librarian did with Alina. And I don't know if she sensed it or if she had seen the newspaper, but I, I feel like she sensed it. The, that was the way the scene came across. I think if there was another Grisha or another heart render around, that first heart render would probably say something about that. One, because you want to have some job security. You know, if you are the only person in a place that can do a specific thing, you'll be in, in more demand. You can probably get paid more for what you do. And if somebody else comes along to threaten that security, yeah, you're probably going to put a little bug in someone's ear and have that person removed. So yeah, I don't I don't think Grisha are very common in Ketterdam. There probably are a few. And they, you know, the ones that are there may be so untrained that it just doesn't register. I mean, you think about the woman who was counting the money in Ke- in the Crow Club and Kaz was like, you're not from here because you count your money differently. And she was like, yeah, so this man in the conductor smuggled me and my daughter because my daughter's Grecian. We didn't want her to go to the war. There's probably a few, but I don't think it it would be anybody who's making themselves known in that sense. That's just, it's too dangerous. So, and you never, I mean, because yeah. you never know where Kerrigan has spies. You know, from, uh, well, saying before he went into the fold, you know, if he's looking for, because think about it, as many marks as the conductor had, you know, he's made numerous trips through the fold. And he w- he had a reputation for smuggling Grisha out of the little palace. So yeah, there's probably Grisha 
all around the countryside that are like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. You know, or they could be hidden just like um, Alina was hidden. Alina didn't know about yeah. her powers. There could be some Grisha who don't know, you know, especially if their parents left the country or were gone somewhere else and they, they're not raised around other Grisha. They're not around other Grisha. Those parents might not know how to recognize what their child is. I mean, there there could be so many different ways about that, you know. But yeah, I can definitely tell you, I Pecker Rollins, mm -mm, he's not Grisha. He's just a cruel, destructive, despicable person. Period. Yeah. So, He's he, he's he's pretty damn despicable. Mm, yeah, despicable. So we'll get yeah. But, um, but I I'm really looking forward to this season. I mean, from what I've seen, it's just freaking incredible. Um, I'm glad I'm I'm kind of I'm actually kind of scared about a couple of the relationships. Like you like you were talking about the relationships that aren't that are kind of like hemming and hawing and here and there it's like are you going to get together or are you not going to get together and it's like there's some that are like getting together that I'm kind of like uh I don't know about that and then there's like there's one in particular I'm looking at I'm like yeah I don't know how this is going to work out which like one? for real which one there's um it's the one, it's the one that that is culminated in at the end of episode Three. Oh, okay, okay. You talking about future? One, the one okay, I messaged one. you about. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, okay. We me, yeah. Okay. Is, is okay. that is that one? I was kind of like, I'm like, eh, like, okay, that's 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 gonna be kind of tricky. Okay. Like, I'm like, eh. okay. Okay. I'm just saying, but it's like it'll be interesting to see how some of these relationships go out. But like I said, it's like the whole relationship between Kaz and Inez is going to be. It's probably gonna get on my nerves. Cause Kaz is forever trying to push her away. Forever, he's just he's just like here, here's some money, go away. Or like you know, I'm getting your freedom, you can go away. And it's like you don't want her to go away. Yeah, like, but it's you know, if if we're looking at what we've seen so far about Kaz's past, he he has some trauma when it comes to people. You know, yeah. and it, it's one of those things where I feel like the attraction is there. He does care for Inej. He may even love Inej, but he probably does not know how to express that. I mean, he was a young kid in those flashbacks. If that was his brother and that's the only family he had, and you wake up in those kind of circumstances where you're surrounded by dead bodies, I can guarantee you Kaz does not. Cass has not made it a point to get close to people. He probably doesn't even know how. Like he can deal with Jesper and Inej from a business standpoint, but anything going beyond that, he probably does not know how to do that. Well, well, okay. Yes, I agree. But in the book, it says literally the first paragraph that we see him, it says he's in love with her. And he okay, and and, and that's fine. You can be in love with a person and still not know how to express that. This is true. And for uh, him, if he feels like that is something he cannot do, like if he does not know how to not right. just physically express it, but does not know how to verbally or emotionally right. express right. it, right? He may yeah. be pushing her away because he's like, I don't want her to have to to have to go through right. this. Right. You know. Right. There. Yeah. Because because in the book series, he is 100 percent totally from the moment he saw her completely, utterly, deeply, deeply in love with her. I mean, just, you can't blame just him. Gone. <laughs> just gone. I mean, he saw her and his whole world was like every even business decisions that he made, as you know, because that. Um, right. So as far as for, for me, uh, Mike, or, uh, I'm sorry, Mark, are you finished or? No, no, that's fine. I was, I was just gonna, I was gonna say that it'll be interesting to see how a lot of these relationships turn out, it, because it's, it, it kind of seems like Melina, I'm sorry, Malin, Malin, Alina, mm -hmm. is kind, is kind of the typical YA, YA one where they, 
where they finally realize their feelings, but something comes, gets in the way, then they kind of get apart, then they get back together, then it's like, oh, something happens, then they're like, oh, and it's like, I'm, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. But I'm I'm looking forward to the season. This season should be actually actually be pretty cool. And yeah, yeah. It looks like and I'm just glad it's back. Me too. Oh, uh, as far as me, um, I have made this known. I hate romance in my shows. I just it's not my thing. So I just sort of fast forward, and that's just me. But as other than that, amazing episode. Amazing opener, amazing premise, amazing Scooby Dang, Skank, Skank. Sorry, <laughs> she can't even I'm, get it out. I'm, I'm tired. Okay, <laughs> I did like nine miles. Day. I'm tired. Um, amazing Scooby Gang, amazing, just the entire the writing. Every I'm excited, and I'm apprehensive because it's like pins and needles. Like, oh, what's gonna happen? Oh, this is gonna happen. Mm-hmm. So I have to say that other than Cobra Kai. This is probably the most exciting premiere that I have seen in like ages, and I'm glad it's back. That's literally all I have to say. I agree. I'm I'm glad it's back. I can't wait for yeah. us to talk more about it, and uh, we will be doing that very soon. But for now, that is it for our show. You can find us online at www.phantomhybrid.com. We are on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Phantom Hybrid. You can chat with us on our Discord channel. You can watch our videos on our YouTube channel and you can listen to us on all major podcast streaming platforms. Thanks for listening. We hope you join the conversation next time.